so for this project you will need a hammer some piping bags you can just get these at Walmart some tile nippers I think that's what they're called I got these at Hobby Lobby a paper plate and some paper bowls or you could use Tupperware containers you're gonna want to get yourself some nice gloves and for the love of all that is holy do not skip this get gloves next you're gonna need some tile adhesive you can just get this at Lowe's Home Depot you're gonna need a little spatula you can use this instead of the piping bags okay so first step draw out your design anything you want simple easy um, the next thing I did was picked out some inspiration from Pinterest just things I liked now you're going to take your design and you're going to draw it out on your base. This is the base I got. Got it at Lowe's. I am lucky to have a mother who orders tons of Fiesta wear online and gets a lot of it broken. So she gave me two of these boxes filled with broken Fiesta wear pieces. Okay, so if you're going to be using this exact brand of tile adhesive, it has been driving me crazy that the lid won't stay on, like it doesn't snap. So I've just been taking a piece of saran wrap covering it and then putting the lid on, and that's been keeping it from drying out. Another helpful tip is as you're cutting up tile pieces, I like to keep a plate of the smaller pieces, and as I cut up pieces, put them on the plate. It seems like it makes it a lot easier for as you're actually laying down the tile and doing the tiling. If you've ever used the nippers before, that's great. If not, I would just play around with a few pieces. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Just get it right on the edge there and just nip it. Um, and this is where you really want to wear gloves, believe me. I have had many little cuts from these little pieces of tile. Okay, so for doing a little area like this, this is why I loved having the piping bag. It was really easy to get in those little areas. Much easier than just using the spatula. Um, if you've never used a piping bag before, it's pretty easy. You can look up some tutorials, but I think you'll get the hang of it. Once you've got your adhesive down, you just start sticking down your little tiles. You really don't have to worry too much about little gaps or just little spaces because you're really not going to see them. If I was going to grout this afterwards, I would be paying more attention to the tile adhesive that squeezes up between the gaps and how big the gaps are. But since I'm just going to do an epoxy clear coat, um, I'm really not worried as long as it doesn't get on top of the tile then I'm really not worried about anything else. So if you're going to grout it, I would pay more attention to the sides of your gaps. But if you're going to do what I do, this is fine. It's also always a good idea to just vacuum the area that you're about to tile, just because there's always all kinds of little dust or tile pieces even. So vacuuming is always a good idea. Once you've got everything tiled, the next thing I did is I just took a little wipe and just went through and made sure that there was none, none of that adhesive on top of the tile. So I just kind of would scratch it off where it's dried. And I have a little tool there just in case it's sticking up too much in any of the cracks. So this is a nice step just to give it all a clean once over. A final step in kind of cleaning it and preparing the mosaic is to just lightly vacuum it just to get all the dust and little pieces. And I will caution you that your vacuum could possibly suck up pieces that are not glued down all the way, which is what happened to me. So be prepared to either dig in your vacuum or have backup pieces. To prepare it for the epoxy coat that we're going to do on top. I just got this duct tape and I put it around all the edges and just made sure it was really firmly pressed up against the wood. And I will say that plan did not work very well in the end. The resin ended up seeping out of the bottom a little bit. So I would say if I did this again I would use a much stronger tape. Um, maybe something that's just more thick or industrial or stiff. Um, but I mean, overall it still worked, so I'm still happy with it. Now onto the fun part, mixing up the epoxy. So for this, I just had a plastic spoon, some outdated cards, two containers, and then of course the epoxy. 
which I believe was $20 or so at Lowe's. It comes with two of these different bottles and basically we're just going to put one into a container and then pour the other one into that and then stir it for six minutes. The instructions mention that it was important not to vigorously stir it, just kind of gently stir. Make sure you get all the edges and the bottom, and make sure you scrape it all around. Um, but yeah, do not skimp on this. You really do have to stir it for six minutes here. Okay, once your time is up, you pour it into this container, scrape it all out, pour it into this one, and then you're gonna stir this one for another six minutes. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of pouring into the second container is, but that's what it says to do. I'll admit, doing this for 12 minutes, it's very mesmerizing. Now that your 12 minutes of stirring are done, you're just going to pour this into the center of the mosaic. Okay, after you've got it all on, the next step is to just smooth it around. Now I used a, just a little outdated card. Uh, which actually I won't recommend because it started chewing up the card too much, rubbing it against the rough tile. But just like a plastic spatula or, I mean really just anything a squeegee would work great. You just really want to make sure you get it in all the edges and in all the little grooves and cracks. And it stays walkable for about 20 minutes so you should be safe. As the clear coat seeps into the little cracks, you're going to get little bubbles that come to the surface. So to get rid of those, you just get a blow dryer just on low and just gently go over the entire mosaic. I had to do this a few times. I just set a timer for 20 minutes and I would go out and check on it to see if it needed it again. And I think I had to do it maybe three times that I just went out and just gave it a pass over with the blow dryer. And that is it. I think it looks great. It added, the clear coat added a really nice finish to the top. And you could add a second layer if you want an even thicker finish, but I just did one. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks great. <laughs>